Hey folks, so it's been a while since my last video on uh, Game Boy Micro shells um, and I know they've released several new shells since then uh, so I figured I'd revisit the video see if they're any better. Uh, my current theory is that the new shells they released, this one is the gold one, last one I did was red I believe. Um, but anyway, my, my current theory is that they're just new colors on the same shells. I don't think the actual shell itself has improved much. Uh, but in the off chance I'm wrong, let's take a look, shall we? So this is the uh, pink and gold shell here. Comes with a snazzy lavender faceplate here. And then the uh, shell itself with some screws. It's just the metal exterior. It's not the plastic frame that quite a few people have um, broken on their Game Boy Micro. Uh, and unfortunately, these things are super pricey, like um, 40 bucks, give or take, depending on the vendor. Uh, let's... Same packaging, as I recall. Not even bags, just these uh, like sticky insulating sheets that they usually stick on screens or something. To protect your plastic bits from getting scratched and shipping. It certainly feels the same as the last shell. So there's how the uh, battery cover fits. If you're okay with something like that. If we were to screw that down nice and tight, there's a big old gap right there. But, you know, maybe it, it looks bent, so maybe we'll have to reshape it. Let's get this thing torn apart and let's take a look. So I'm going to start by taking off my strap here. Maybe. There we go. And this was originally a silver Game Boy Micro that I built with parts. I've actually done quite a few videos on this. Um, I had the uh, shell Cerakoted because it was really scratched and uh, you know, it just wasn't looking good. And the Cerakote has held up fantastically. Only real issue is... Uh, it's not exactly cheap, so I can't recommend it, but it's okay. Uh, let's pop this out. So there is a faceplate removal tool that Nintendo highly recommends you use. I usually just use like a paper clip or something, put a little bit of pressure under the faceplate, and then just pop each side individually. Uh, this thing's dirty. I guess it was time to take it apart to clean it. All right. So disassembly. The big old, these two big old tri-wing screws in the battery compartment need to come out. The tri-point. And we need to pop out the two small black ones on this side. And 
and the two small black ones on the top. Mine are no longer black. They've uh, worn down to the silver underneath the coating. These are just cheap aftermarket screws. You can buy screw sets for the Game Boy Micro, and if you do, you'll probably get this exact pack. Which we're not going to be testing because I've already got that right in front of me. Okay. And then the shell should just come apart. We've got the back off, and then the front should hinge off. Do we have to... No, it should just come off. There we go. Mine was stuck down with some uh, adhesive. That's okay. Uh, if you're replacing the shell, this is all you need to do. You don't need to go any further. Uh, you can continue taking your Game Boy Micro apart if you want to replace the buttons or if you need to do some repairs in here. Uh, if you need to replace the screen, it's... well... You're as far as you need to go, it'll come right out. But we're leaving it as is. Before testing that out though, let's see if the uh, aftermarket shell fits with an OEM shell. Because despite the color, this is OEM. Like I said, I had it coated. So we could screw that together, that seems like it'll fit. Suppose that's what we should test, huh? Yeah. Fits surprisingly nicely. Oh, I just realized there's a huge dent in my uh, start button area. It's kind of disappointing. I'm gonna have a hard time panning that out without ruining the paint. Let's try the other way around. Yeah, it doesn't fit great, but it does fit. It doesn't seem to line up decently. Oh. Be careful of this, the power button will fall out. Whenever you're installing screws, even in plastic shells, unless you're installing the screws for the first time in the plastic shell, you always want to give it a quick back turn until the threads, you'll, you'll feel it drop into place, uh, otherwise you'll likely cross thread out. There it goes. Usually there's an audible click, there wasn't that one, so, sorry. Good lord. Probably recommend using your original screws, which unfortunately is not an option in my case. But that's because I built this micro from parts. There we go, that one went in just fine, mostly.
can get this in. Try one more time on this one. <sighs> nice. In eight months, this is the first screw I've stripped. That's not going in. Uh, screw it, I'm not going to bother. So that hole doesn't even line up. Check, take a look at these wicked panel gaps. So, let me grab a spudger. So I'm not pointing with my screwdriver and scratching up the shell. Along this side, the plastic bezel is completely flush. Along this side, the plastic bezel has a huge gap. Along the top, it has a huge gap. The metal shell, like it doesn't, it doesn't seat fully. I bet if we take out the screw, we can get it to seat better. Yeah, look at that the screw actually prevents it from seating fully. All right, so we'll leave those two screws out. Um, my shoulder button, it's, it's aftermarket. It probably didn't fit too great to begin with, but there's a nice big old gap. Um, this side actually looks pretty decent. Huge gap in the headphone area. Oh, let's get the uh, battery cover on. It's got a battery in there too, so we can test it out. Forgive me, I don't feel like dealing with the captive screw. Oh, maybe I have to. This doesn't feel like the same thread pitch. Oh well. I'll just leave it like that for now. So the faceplate actually fits on the shell pretty decently. No complaints there. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's kind of cloudy though. The clarity isn't that great. It looks like there's a screen protector or something on there, but there's not. I already peeled that off. Kind of see how it reflects the light. See, there's like bubbles or something. I, I don't understand. I mean, it works, but I'd stick with your OEM screens if you can. OEM ones still have the Nintendo logos and such. This is just a sticker over an OEM screen. But, I mean, it works. It's all right. Oh, uh, there's that wonderful gap. You can see the battery cover is flush right here with my screw barely holding it in and this fucking huge panel gap there. So, I mean, I 
I don't like it. I still don't like it. Um, I think this is better than their last attempt, but it's still not great. I don't know. I really don't recommend these unless you have absolutely zero choice in the matter. Like, you've received a pile of parts that used to be a micro, and you would like to have a micro. Or, you know, your micro has been just so banged up that you need a new case for it. I mean, I guess in that circumstance, since you have literally no choice. But outside of that, you know, you just want to get a fresh new color on your Game Boy Micro. Fuck no, these things are still so bad. Um, on that note, I do want to thank Retro Game Repair Shop for sending me one of these new shells to check out. Or, well, new, new color, I guess. I think these have been out for a few months at this point already anyway, but... Out of curiosity, I just want to try putting it together with one panel. See if we can't mix and match. I did that uh, dry fit. I'm not going to bother trying to put in these screws because it's the screw holes that are fucked up, or the threads. And there will still be a gap there. Interestingly, if you if you press down, you know, if you close the gap manually, you can see the screw hole doesn't line up, but all the panel gaps disappear and it looks so much better. This is still going to be terrible. Yep. But this... Does this fit? Yeah, that fits nicely. Go figure, OEM uh, battery cover. Remember that video I did a super long time ago? Probably not, it was quick. On these shitty placement battery covers, this is the one that I bought. I was complaining because there were literal cracks in the stupid thing. I bet this fits on this shell the same way as the other one. Oh no, this doesn't even fit on this either. So I just got extra unlucky when I got this battery cover. Wow. I mean, there's no panel gap, but that doesn't line up. Never even noticed that until now. I hope it's not like that on every... No. So yeah, I just got extra unlucky with this one. I don't know what the fuck happened. Real quick, I'm just going to try it the other way around. feels a lot better. I bet we can get these screws to go in now too. Man, that went in so easily. I 
Amazing how that works. Is that the stripped one? No. Alright, we can do one. So I'll do this one. The hole doesn't quite line up though. Eh. It worked. Out of curiosity, I'm going to try the stripped one. Probably going to regret it, but... Yeah, I can't get that to go in. Doesn't help that the hole doesn't quite line up. Alright, uh... Battery cover... Does fit, surprisingly. So, yeah, I don't know what the fuck happened with this one, but I guess that is an option if you want to do that. This should go in now. There you go. Um, the shell fits quite a bit better. There's still some impressive panel gaps around the uh, headphone jack, but the panel gap in the battery cover is gone. Panel gap between the front and back is gone. Front and back gone. Yeah. Interestingly, there's still a panel gap around the uh, plastic bezel on the charge port. And the charge port itself seems like it's underneath the shell. I don't know what's up with that. I think I'm going to have to take my Game Boy apart because that is flexing way more than it should. It's not facing the right direction. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Alright, so... If you really need to reshell your micro, I guess I can recommend it as long as you don't use this part. This part is just fucking garbage. The other two pieces are decent. I don't recommend paying 40 bucks for it, and the finish will absolutely not match. Um, I, uh, you'll have to refer back to my... Actually, you know what? This does actually... I mean, aside from being gold, this the finish looks like it would match my silver, the original silver, a lot better than the other one I had did. As you can see, this is like a brushed finish, whereas this is the actual, like, textured, anodized finish. So it appears that there are two completely different factories making battery covers. I figured I should test that too, just in case. But yeah, that fits even better. Not really surprising, but there we go. All right, so yeah, again, thanks to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending me one of these to test out. Um, I don't think anything has improved since I last did a video on this, uh, but if you want to check out my old video. I'll go ahead and throw a link to it in the description. Be warned, it is one of my first videos. I like to think I've gotten way better at this over the year, almost two, that I've been working on this sort of stuff. Um, so it's a little rough, a little rough, um, but I think all the information is still there. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to reshell my micro oh <laughs> the wrong side came out um okay yeah otherwise I'm gonna go ahead and reshell my micro back in the original shell and uh prepare for the other video I'm about to do so 
Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.